Today is July 22nd, 2020. My name is Anne Shi, and I'm with the Houston Asian American Archive. Today we have Dr. Amy Khan, uh, who will speak with us about her COVID-19 experiences. She is um, one of the researcher, scientists, and editor of the Brian Chemistry Consortium on uh, Rice University. And um, thank you, Dr. Khan, for taking out your time to speak with us today. And to start, can you tell us a little bit about yourself since it's the first time you're on the archive with us? Okay. Uh, let me see what I need to do, continue. Yeah, uh, my name is Amy Khan. I work at RISE for over 30 years at the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. And uh, I manage a lab. We have about 10 people uh, in the group. And uh, uh, we, we can talk about that. <laughs> so more, is that your question? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just wondering if you could also share with us how the coronavirus pandemic has uh, impacted your life. Okay, this has several levels. Uh, in the business, uh, a research group, many people didn't realize this. Uh, they're in the university. The research group actually is self-reliance. We, well, funding, support everything that we do, including a piece of paper that we have to come up with financial support for all our people, which is we have 10 students and the PhD level uh, staff members, researchers. And also, um, uh, so our funding could be coming annually, but the next year will be a really a challenging time because we depend on the energy industry, the oil industry for funding majority of our activities. And as you know, the, uh, the energy, uh, the oil company wasn't doing very well. And on top of this, we have this pandemic, uh, which set a lot of limitation uh, about what we can do, how much we can do, try our best to make progress. On the family level, I have, you know, I have relatives, I have aunts and uncles in the age of 90 to 100 years. So we actually have a family reunion to celebrate my aunt's 100 years of birthday that has to be canceled. And so even I worry about their safety, their health. My uncle is in a retirement home. Uh, so that's not a very good uh, environment <laughs> for them. So there's a lot of worry in that. But the personal level, um, maybe you didn't know, I am one of the first people who was infected by the virus. Uh, Fortunately, at the end of it is uh, uh, we are. I, I count my blessing. We really didn't uh, wasn't hurt too bad in all these aspects. It's just worries. <laughs> uh, fortunately, uh, that's where we have we are right now. Uh, a lot of worries, but not really materialized to that really hurt us. But we do lose a friend to the virus. Um, that's very sad. Yeah, definitely um, very sad to lose that uh, friend of yours. And fortunately, um, and you have recovered. We are very grateful for that too. Um, can you share with us um, how, uh, what kind of um, protections you have been taken to uh, protect yourself and others during this pandemic? Um, yeah, um, I really, I, oh, through this whole episode, I'm really uh, appreciated that my background training in science um, 
I contracted this virus to a uh, visit to Egypt uh, very early on. This is way before Houston had a, a, a known case. I probably, I may be the first case or publicly uh, known case in Houston. And uh, uh, I'm very fortunate. Actually, while we were on the tour, several people, this is a uh, tour with 36 uh, attendants uh, group, and 30 of them are Americans and six are Canadians. And uh, during the tour, we have observed about our, our tour guide is the first person who say he's sick, but the, he didn't tell us how actually come think, thinking back of that, I think he is very sick, but he didn't tell us. He said he has a bad diet, so he has some diarrhea and that's it. But uh, following that, uh, several people were sick, uh, Americans. And uh, then uh, my sister went with us. My sister worked for a pathology department in a medical school before she retired. So she deal with virus in her professional life. She told me on the plane, she lived in Maryland, I live in Houston, so we depart at the Heathrow uh, Airport. She told me that she doesn't think that the, she thinks something is wrong uh, because she and her husband didn't feel well. So the day we came back, uh, we came back on the Thursday, on the Friday, I also feel uh, sick. And the, on the Saturday, my husband feels sick. And, uh, and that's the exact day. The day we came back, we saw the news about Italy and uh, Spain, Korea first. And then the Spain, uh, I have a good feeling that uh, maybe, potentially, we, were, we are infected. Of course, uh, we don't have any proof. Um, on the Wednesday of the following week, I actually visited my doctor, and uh, my doctor didn't see. <laughs> I, I don't blame her, him at all. But, you know, the the whole medical uh, 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 professional haven't realized that this could be real. This could be coming to Houston, Texas. So my doctor doesn't think I have uh, the possibility at all because I do not have upper respiratory symptoms. All I have is a low fever and the fever didn't count as a fever if you talk about medical terms. My fever is below 100 degree Fahrenheit. But the, I seldom feel sick so I, I can I can feel that it's unusual. So the following Monday or Tuesday, I still go to work, but I bring my mask. I, I wear my mask and I shorten my hours in the office just for a two or three hours. We have a group meeting. I have my mask on. Uh, some people may find this funny, funny, you know, <laughs> wearing a mask at that time is a funny thing uh, to do. But then on Wednesday, I visit the doctor. The doctor still think I have anything. But I think my biggest thing um, that uh, I feel uh, sorry for it is that Wednesday is uh, Ash Wednesday. So I actually went to the church in the evening because that morning the doctor assured me that I have nothing. And I also feel fine, you know, but I don't have coughing, running nose or anything. So, but, but uh, I still take a uh, cautious uh, uh, step. I sit on the very end and I leave very quickly. Uh, so um, then until the, the Saturday, one of our friends in Taiwan, who, who is on the same trip, uh, find out she is, uh, positive. She is. She has been positively tested. 
So we immediately informed Rice, and uh, Rice helped me get on to uh, contact with uh, Harris County uh, uh, Public Health Department. And uh, they are very, very professional. Uh, Harris County Public Health, I can tell that uh, the, the agent who worked with me is following the book in contact tracing. So uh, she uh, asks, sometimes we communicate at 11 p.m. on the text. She has all kinds of questions, make sure I list all the contact I have. And uh, she followed up with all the contact, informed the church uh, about the, my presence at the, at the mass. And uh, I felt that uh, at the end, we didn't, I didn't, there's no evidence that I spread this virus. <laughs> this virus I bring in probably pass away in my body. This is one consolation that I have. Uh, I felt I did, I tried to be a good citizen and uh, do the right thing. And uh, no, no, I never, since I came back, I haven't met any friends. So no friends is exposed. And mask and social distancing, this help. This, I, I, you, they say typically one or two people you will transmit this disease to on average. I think it's two per, per, per patient. Uh, but I think I may have uh, minimized that on myself. Uh, mainly because uh, I believe in the science and I kind of have some understanding. So I take care of it even before. Uh, the authority of before being tested. So uh, that's a personal part. Uh, anyway. But uh, it's really sad to see that um, Houston or Texas still go through the same magnitude of uh, infections that we should have learned uh, a lot from the experience in New York, New York and New Jersey. And uh, uh, let's just say, I think we have the local authority, the local public health is doing a great job. Uh, but uh, when the number is so large, I don't think they can do anything about it. Mm, but my personal experience has been they are very professional. They did a very good job in tracing. If there's only a few people like me, uh, that probably will be controlled. But uh, when we have a large number, uh, we, just, just, we just have to bear with it. Yeah, thank you so much. And I just want to say we really appreciate your taking so much precautions. I know how difficult it was in um, end of February where everyone was not wearing masks and their CDC uh, telling us that we shouldn't be wearing a mask for this um, respiratory um, illness. And um, yeah, and thanks to your scientific background who has allowed us to, um, um, yeah, know so much information before this um, information uh, that was public. Um, right. Yeah. Um, so next, I was just wondering, uh, what would you like to say to people who are still protesting against the wearing of masks uh, as times of now, where we're still in the uprising trend of the, the illness in Houston, in Texas, and or the southern of um, the United States? Uh, well, I think everybody needs the time to learn about, learn about this is something new, you know. Uh, different people have different life experience for me because of my training in science. And I think 
being Asian is more, uh, we were more alert to this because even though I didn't live in Asia when they have SARS or the other kind of viruses, uh, the, the recent, uh, recent uh, spread of viruses, but we hear more about it, so kind of be, we are more alert to it. Uh, our friends in in Asia, when they go through the SARS, we pay attention to that. So we are a little bit ahead in our in this kind of thinking. Uh, but the, for someone else who doesn't have this exposure, they, they will take a bit longer to realize. You know, this is not nothing to do with politics. <laughs> it is something to do with our economy, our life, and uh, uh, I can totally, uh, uh, I have the same kind of concern about the economy as uh, the small business owners, because we also have to come up the means to support our students and the research staff. So I can understand we need to go back to work, but uh, then we need to protect ourselves better so, so, uh, so that we all can be safe. The people just die um, from the disease. Um, and uh, I'm, sure, I, I, I'm sure that people will eventually wear their masks, but the, if, if the more resistance we have, the longer it's going to take. Yeah, for sure. Um, thank you for sharing that, Dr. Khan. Um, next, I was just wondering uh, for you personally, have you been um, experiencing um, anxiety or any type of um, depression during this whole, because all these experiences sounds really traumatic, being yeah, infected at first and then having to go through that much um, incidences. Yeah, uh, well, I, I guess the, the main anxiety will be my, uh, you know, I, we have a very close family and we really worry about my, our elder relatives and not being able to visit them and knowing that the condition could be very, very bad, uh, that worries, it, that is worrisome. Right. Other than that, I'm an optimistic person, and I, I treasure the opportunity <laughs> to to be alone, to have some free time to think about um, deeper things. So, are you uh, quarantined by yourself, like during the this past few months, or do you live with your family? I live with my husband and. My daughter um, came back, uh, she's graduating, so she has a little bit of free time, so she came back a little bit. Uh, uh, we don't, um, we, we, we volunteer at the Houston SPCA, and uh, so over the few months, we pick up puppy and dogs, you know, they are the best friend of mankind, They're really, really cute. So without being able to interact with, with human friends, we are very satisfied with our puppy and dogs, uh, visitors at home. Yeah, that's great. And we have so much to thank, be thankful for our pets during this pandemic, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So has um, this quarantine period help you or help you discover more about yourself, like having to spend more time being introspective? And um, does, uh, do you have any uh, more reflections about yourself during this period? Mm, not so much. I'm still very, very busy. Uh, try to we try to we are still trying to work uh, to uh, produce research even though it's because it's actually become more difficult so uh, it's a good time to be able to do some more readings 
and we have a uh, we have a group meeting on Zoom every week. Uh, then we have a uh, we actually, I also in a committee with the Society of Petroleum Engineer that uh, we had the first, uh, uh, what do you call it, online meeting, international meeting. This meeting is supposed to be held in Aberdeen, uh, Scotland in June, uh, June 24th and 25th. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, biannual meeting, so it's, it happened this year. Uh, every year it will be in Aberdeen, Scotland. So when this thing happened, uh, the committee decided that we would like to have a virtual meeting. So that also keep me busy uh, to help with this process. Uh, uh, we are all kind of nervous. <laughs> I'm still nervous online. <laughs> so uh, I think also uh, this pushes us, especially uh, we are the older senior uh, group that we are not tech very technically advanced in with this new technology, but even my 90 years old uncle has to learn how to use Zoom. Uh, so we all learned uh, a, a great deal um, how to use the technology to, to interact with people. And I truly believe that uh, this, this uh, internet world uh, can be better, but it takes practice. Uh, sometimes the interaction, we, uh, we are both sides and our lack of practice and we couldn't really interact as much as uh, in person. And I hope to be able to see this barrier be overcome, then we can always just talk on the computer. <laughs> it will be, uh, hopefully it will be as good an experience as the in person, you know. Yeah, so, yeah definitely. Uh, and you touched uh, briefly on my next question, like um, what would be our new normal um, in your perspective? And you mentioned that there is technology going to take more part in our lives. Uh, what else do you see that is part of a new normal? Right, I, I really don't know how long it would take for the vaccine to come in. I think things can improve. If we have a vaccine, we, uh, without a vaccine, I cannot see that we are able to uh, really return. But even with a vaccine, I suspect we will enter into a new normal. Uh, I spend 90 minutes a day commuting to rice, but, you know, 40 minutes one way. Uh, it's a lot of time. So, so in, in that respect, I really am happy that I don't have to buy the traffic <laughs> to go to work at this 90 minutes I can use, I, I'm using it to exercise more. So uh, there are certain things which is a good thing that even after the pandemic, maybe we can, maybe we can reduce the number of uh, business travel. You know, the business travel is a huge waste of time. But some in the past, you don't have the excuse. You have to go. You have to go when when the meeting is called. But hopefully, uh, the, this can be uh, reduced a bit. Uh, so we gain some more time on our own for not wasting <laughs> time on it. I can never imagine, you know, after 911, the whole travel, airport security was changed overnight because of 911. And uh, until today, we are still doing the same kind of security. So I cannot see that when this virus pandemic is over, we will really go back to the old way of living.
the poverty, there's something going to change. And uh, hopefully it's changed into the better. Yeah, we're very hopeful that it happens. But um, also uh, regarding Houston, uh, we are a very oil and gas um, focused city, um, okay. given yeah the current like impact from the economic side of things. Um, do you see Houston's role in the globe and the like uh, U.S. Demo uh, demography will change in the future, given the oil and gas industry's um, kind of turmoil right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, uh, my husband used to work for the oil and gas company. You know, almost everybody in Houston is one way or the other related to the oil industry. So uh, we hope. Uh, uh, we don't want to change our lifestyle, but uh, it may, it's hard to say. It's hard, it's difficult to say. I suspect the oil industry will still uh, sustain for, for 20, 30 years, but the eventually the electrical, the other kind of more global friendly energy may take hold. Mm, hopefully, it's not in the near future. We like, we hope this is a shortened uh, problem that Houston is facing, but it certainly is a painful thing for the for a lot of our young, especially younger professional who are in the oil industry. Right. Um. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, and Dr. Khan, I'm just wondering, um, has this uh, past like months of events, for example, we haven't seen a lot of um, uh, kind of xenophobic uh, attacks on Asian Americans in the early, like um, late February or early March during the pandemic. And also later on in June, we had um, the death of the George Floyd happening to um, kind of instigate more racial division among our society. Um, have you or uh, you witnessed some um, kind of in inspiring or some um, debates that's worth sharing or your perspe uh, perspectives that you're willing to share on these incidents? Yeah, um, I didn't go out much uh, the last uh, two, three months. So I personally didn't have much experience. Uh, but the, uh, just an just a example, uh, a friend of mine who went to uh, Trader Joe's, he gave a uh, uh, he gave a tip to a homeless at a trade, uh, in front of Trader Joe's, and this homeless asked him about Chinese and virus, you know. And so I think that that kind of uh, uh, talk about linking China to the virus, I don't think is a helpful thing. It is, you know, the virus is as nature as anything else. It's a, like a tomato growing in the garden. When it comes, it comes. It's not related to people. I can, I can, from my past experience, I can certainly you know, agree I may hit some of these unpleasant <laughs> events if I go out every day, if I'm, but, 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 for this incident, I did it. But, and those I think is the Houston city itself is quite very diverse. I really like Houston. I think within the city limit, perhaps it's a little bit better. Um, but uh, uh, it's really unfortunate uh, for what happened to uh, uh, George Floyd and uh, we grew up when Vincent Chen was killed in Michigan. 
due because of this racial uh, violence. And 40 years later, uh, we are still dealing with similar kind of unfair uh, thing. Um, I think we need to improve. Uh, we, you know, eventually uh, this world is getting smaller and smaller because of the transportation, because the communication. We all live here together, we shouldn't create such a prejudice based on, based on race, I guess. Yeah. So. yeah. Definitely, uh, and I really like the your metaphor about the tomato growing in the garden. Um, yeah, there's uh, the force of nature that we cannot undo. Um, so I'm just wondering, uh, next, what is your um, kind of perspective on how the next generation will tackle um, like all these uh, social inequity issues um, and whether, uh, how they can uh, see the um, kind of pandemic being a little bit more um, prone to those people who are in poverty, like the social inequity um, and the pandemic kind of adding to one another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, it is really, really sad to see that the poor was getting hit uh, unproportionately high because of their lack of uh, medical and uh, support. Uh, I, I, I think uh, the young people <laughs> can Bobby, maybe this is your your opportunity uh, to be able to do something. Uh, we are approaching retirement age, and uh, there's not that much we can help. Uh, but the, the really the, this world is one world, and and uh, we, we just hope that the racial uh, division and has has to come down. If, if we don't help people in Africa with their diseases, I'm sure this pandemic is going to hit Africa or the other poor country more than us, even though we don't hear much about it. But uh, if, 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 if there's a place that it hit it hard, none of us can escape. This, the disease will have to spread. So you, know, you just have to take care of everybody. And that's my personal opinion. So we do have to take care of everybody, including maybe the first thing we should look at is the, the poor people in the US, United States. So. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Dr. Khan. Um, and just my last question, and hopefully to end it on the optimistic note, uh, what is the first thing you're going to do when the vaccine has come out and it's safe to go back to our normal life? <laughs> oh, I have so many things I want to do. I think uh, the small thing will be go to the restaurant and the big thing will be to travel again. I, and, uh, uh, I hope Egypt is not the last place I visit. I really enjoy that trip. That's an amazing place. Unfortunately, it, it's tarnished by the event. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Khan, for your time and your inspiring notes. And thank you for taking care of everyone in this um, pandemic uh, by um, wearing masks and taking the precautions needed. Yeah, uh, I thank you for the opportunity to to think, say a, a few words about this event, and uh, I really appreciate the all the support I have received when I'm sick. You know, the university uh, Rice is doing a very good job. You know, the county they they, they take care of us really well, but, and uh, I just hope that we will go back to a semi-normal 
life pretty soon for everybody. Yeah. But before we get that, uh, we still have to take care of business. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah.